Man. Brother, yes, how you doing, man? I'm good, boss man. How are you? All right, good to see you. Absolutely. Thanks for I being like here. those figurines in the back, man. Oh, yeah, you know, gotta <laughs> represent. You know? Yeah, I see that. I see that. Yeah. Uh, you know, yes. Give me from you weary coach. You got the bowl today, General. You got the okay. bowl. Okay, outstanding. Welcome to Mind of a Man. I'm your host, Elder James Jones, my co-host. Uh, Toby, Mississippi. From Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> I always, I, I, I want to say Mississippi, but it's, the F is in there. And close I always enough. have to remember. Close enough. Yeah. Well, it's never close enough. I wouldn't want no one to mess up my name. So, But your name, it's, coach, it's easy. Yeah. It's easy. It's, it's always easy for the person who has that. But my co-host, <laughs> Toby, uh, our producer back there, uh, Courtney Clark from Clark TV. Thank you. And we have a, uh, a special guest here, uh, Brandon Bell. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, last week, my co-host, he, he held it down. Uh, they were talking about relationships. And, you know, I came back. I caught, I caught some of it. You know, I was surprised he didn't get married yet. And his wife became his counselor. <laughs> but uh, you did a great job. You know, it's always fun when you have your your, your significant other on there. Uh, okay. you, you you try to keep it real, and and hopefully people will um, get something from it. Mm -hmm. But no further ado. Hey, Brandon, yes, Abonado sir. can do can can tell us a little bit about you, but nobody mm -hmm. can do you better than you. So yes, tell sir. us about you, Brandon. How's everybody doing tonight? My name is Brandon Ball from uh, Inglewood, California. Graduated from Full Sail 2020. I'm an audio engineer by trade and an actor and a musician by passion. Um, I love being around positive men and um, I see that we're gonna have a meeting of the minds tonight and I'm, I'm ready to dive in. Uh oh, all right, all right, all right. Inglewood. Yeah. So you a Laker fan. Uh, you know, we do what we do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm sad. I'm sad. Yeah, they I'm, gave you the boom this season. The blues, right? The Lakers the gave us the blues. blues. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, you know, we, we have rebuilding gears, right? As yeah. you say. <laughs> yeah. hey, that's, that's the way I'm looking at it. That's the way yeah. I'm looking at it. Yeah. Y'all did get a ring a couple years you know, ago. Y'all got a ring out the deal. Right. So we have, we have a few. It wasn't bad. Right, you know, but we have a few of them to brag about, you know. So, yeah, that that uh, is true. That is true. Yeah, y'all remind I have me faith somewhat. In the squad. Yeah, y'all remind me somewhat of the Yankees. Y'all, y'all, you know, old Jerry, yeah. you, you know, know, got that money out there, and he uh, he made it the happen. The pinstripes, yeah, the yeah. evil empire. I yeah. take it all day. Yankees, all day. baby, all the okay. way, yeah. all the way. Well, you know, I'm a Dodger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dodger had their times too. Uh, yeah. But the topic today is very interesting. So, mm -hmm. Brandon, ask me this. Being that you come from a different age than I do, right? Mm -hmm. A different generation. How does or how do you look at mental illness? Because how we view mental illness on our level is totally different mm -hmm. than, than your generation, where you're actually walking in it. We right. just get to see it on TV with numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, well, perspective. Now, are we ready to open up this can of worms? That's the first yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, that, that's what they okay. there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I feel like mental illness has always been here, right? Um, it's okay. just now it's more prevalent to talk about it. It's a it's an easy topic to really get off your chest, but. I know for myself growing up, I had some uncles that had a personality disorder or somebody that was uh, bipolar and esque or even depressed, right? Okay. But they hid it, they hid it from everyone. Now I can tell you, hey, James, I'm depressed. I'm really going through it um, and I don't know why. Hey, Toby, I. I'm, I have anxiety. It's hard for me to talk into a hundred people, five people. It's hard for me to order my food, you know? So I just feel like now my generation and younger are able to talk about it and, and accept what it is that they have. Okay. 
Okay. I, I say that because in my generation, mm -hmm. we thought it was more of a mental issue and that either they were either going to um, put that belt on you right. or you were going to the hospital and you were going to get some shock treatment. Okay. Right. It was going, it was going, you was either going to comply and hide it or you were going to go somewhere where, um, as we said, them some real people that real needed real help. Mm -hmm. Right. And to me, uh, I think so much has gone on now that it's just even more prevalent. I think right. it's been there, but I think it's spread it and even more so, more prevalent. Uh, with, mental, with mental health, and I'm glad you brought up different parts of mental health, because just to say mental health, that's, it's, that's, it's so broad. Right. Um, when we talk about things like, um, I did not know that people had depression like they have depression. And people would go to work and you would think they were okay and come to find out they were manic depressive. And I'm like, well, right. if you're manic depressive, how are you doing your job? <laughs> right. Uh, but it, it's for real. And, and uh, we're finding out, uh, especially here in America, I really don't see that when I go to the Middle East. I really don't see that. And I don't know how it is, Toby. Like, uh, let's let's take Africa because you're from, you're from Nigeria. How is mental health there? With younger, with with the younger generation, you on mute, man. Talking to yourself. Mental health. <laughs> um, historically, mental health. They people. There's certain things that factors. Certain things that happen when you have mental health. One day alienate you. Mm -hmm. They alienate you. People alienate you. People don't want to be no parts of what you're going through. Okay. Um, and those that want to help you, they'll keep you locked up in a church. And, and they start. And yep, in Nigeria, yep. Based on what I've seen, because I I, I, been, I live there, so they put you through a lot. Is either they they mark people run away from you, or those who really care about you, they'll have you not in the mental. They do have mental institutions in Nigeria, but. Most people can't afford it, so they mm. put them in churches and have the pastors, the deacon, the pastor, the bishop, and everybody just taking turns praying for this person, giving him, giving him or her certain herbs or stuff from the herbalist and stuff. So they don't really talk about it loud publicly like we're doing right now here in the United States. They keep it hush-hush because to some families, it's an embarrassment to them. They take it, okay, he has mental health. Somebody didn't cast roots on him or somebody has casted something, a spell on him or or something. Now he's all messed up. He or she is all messed up. So they, you see that they run, yeah. they put him in the church or if um, if they have the money, they put them in a mental in mental institution. Wow. Those are the three things that they, they do. But it's not something that is public, publicly talked about because mm -hmm. if it's publicly talked about, that people will distance themselves from people will distance themselves from um from that person. So, so. if I can just ask, mm -hmm. with with being locked in a church, right? Mm -hmm. Um, are we all strong believers in God at this panel? Yes. Okay, um just, yes, I, I, I am. Okay. I'm more so, in progress, but I am. I, I think oh, as we all are. Like, I think yeah. in general is more <laughs> in general is there a lot more than I am. Okay. So um, so with that yep. being said and that upbringing and that foundation is also the underlying composition that it is looked at as being demonic and being possessed mm. if you have this type of illness and this outburst towards humanity right. so <clears throat> that it is so many avenues that we can take with mental health because everything falls in line in in many different areas, you know, like my grandma used to say, oh, you think you're crazy? I'm gonna show you crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, so so it it's kind of hard to really pinpoint the problem or where it sprang from, from my perspective. Okay. 
that 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 that's a that's a, a, a good perspective. If we talk in spiritual, there are some elements that are there, and we see them mm-hmm. in the Word of God, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we are men of color, but um, there is a thing that is demonic spirit that does take does take over your your mindset or your mm-hmm. body uh, mm-hmm. because there are things that we call uh that affect you in such a way like drugs right mm-hmm. and it affects your brain in such a way that you can try it one time and die or you can try it one time and it can be a strong dose and damage your your cognitive or damage you somewhere mentally and it throws you off right and that is a to me that is a spirit but now it just evolved into something more damaging in the mm-hmm. physical realm now okay, okay. It, it really it, it has attacked you it's, it's no different than an alcoholic you know mm-hmm. that first one he started off with a wine cooler all right right he didn't graduated to a beer now right right or, or, or 40 you know some oe he then he then he done graduated he's been working on that six pack man. i don't know what an oe is Tell yeah. them, tell them, tell them what OE is. Oh no, you, you got it, you got it, boss man. You got it. <laughs> OE, I, I have no idea what that is. It, um, it's, it's called Old English eight hundred malt liquor. Uh, see, that's what you should have said. I don't know what OE now. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ah, ah. That that's like that's like me telling Brandon uh, that Billy D, that Coke forty five. It might be a bit. <laughs> little bit before his time yeah no, i got but, uncles man yeah nah, he's got uncles <laughs> yeah. The, yeah those things uh in in the spiritual understanding and i and i we're not going to go down that that, that road but right. it does have a way of affecting people from the spirit I, I always teach this whatever you have going on physically that that bothers you had its roots spiritually Mm -hmm. and we all have to understand if you've never been taught you're a spiritual being before you're a physical being correct that's how you were created you're you're three parts just like god is but you you have your roots there that's that's where you're created you're a spiritual being and you made up of some dirt and you got a soul you know Mm -hmm. and and so um that damage that gets done to you um, I E, it's a big thing. Mm-hmm. It used to be hush hush. A lot of uh, molestation or uh, rapes happen. That trauma damaged people, right, and can cause them mentally to revert back where they're not in their sound mind no more, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that is a, a mental illness. But I, I'm hearing more now about depression. Right. Mm-hmm. I hear a lot of more about depression and I'm like, how did we get here? You know, what what is so what is going on that make you so depressed that you would think about suicide or you're thinking about uh, just ending your life or hurting others mm-hmm. or you're you're so hurt or you're so depressed that uh, nothing matters anymore. Nothing matters. Uh, not even your own family members matter. Uh, I don't even know. I can I can tell you some makeup, but depression. I'm starting to see more of that than I'm starting to see. And right behind that is is people who have anxiety all of a sudden. You know, um, and and normally, what I contribute to, and I'm not a psychiatrist or anything. When I normally see anxiety. That means some kind of trauma didn't happen to that individual, but they're functioning, but some kind of trauma happened to them. Um, I know me and you, Toby, we did a show on about about mental health and about I think also about suicide and mm-hmm. the damage mm-hmm. that it can cause uh, not only to the individual, but to everybody that's connected to them. To everybody, yeah, yeah, and, and so I've talked I have, about it on the show. Mm-hmm. I have um, family members 
that you know that have illness that you know uh what we call it um it's not ADHD it's um autism right but they're they're high functional autism where they can go and they can work but there's that part of them that is not fully functional where they can be totally on their own i mean like you brandon you can go pay bills you can work you can you can manage they can manage to a degree and then mm -hmm. that other part they can't um speak on that about about you know those things about um autism because i'm seeing a lot of that all of a sudden too it's like it almost seemed like once you got past once you got past 1979, it was like all bets is off. Everything's starting to come. Yeah. Uh, all kind of sexual diseases, all kind of mental disease. I'm like, what in the world? What, you know, what's going on? Everybody running amok. Uh, <laughs> but to, to speak on depression and anxiety first, and then I'll segue back that way. Um, it's, it's rough, you know? Um, Again, my family and my upbringing, there was no such thing as depression, right? It was either you had a bad day, you want to talk about it. If not, figure it out, go pray, do whatever you got to do, get out my face. Right. <clears throat> so for me being in, in this generation, I still have that upbringing. What? Know? Yeah, 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 I still have it. Um, and again, you know, I have debates every now and then with my peers, um, because my thought process is so traditional. You it know? is? Yeah, I, I would say so. Because <laughs> no, you're younger, you know? so it kind of surprises mm -hmm. me, Brandon, mm -hmm. that because I'm hearing a lot about AI and I, I have grandchildren, mm -hmm. uh, don't know how to write a letter, but can get on any phone. <laughs> any tablet right and almost try to break the code to it mm. and i'm like i'm like uh my mind is is bewildered with how is it that you can be uh have an illness but yet can get inside of something that is com more complex to me and i'm not just talking about getting on there, going to compose an email or something like that. I'm talking sure. about these kids get on there and they'll take your phone and look at it and, and then start playing with it. Mm -hmm. Start doing well, things on it that, that normally we don't. Right. Well, technology is designed to hypnotize, right? Entertainment, media, it's a way of propaganda. It's a way to feed into your soul for... for, uh, for you said something there. I almost preached a sermon like on that, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's, it's hypnosis to a degree, yep. right? So once you have a baby at the age of two, once he cries, you give him the iPad for him to shut up, he's going to figure out because the colors are there. You know, if I press this that's button, happening. this is going to pop that up. We're doing that too, right? I got Netflix, <laughs> we're doing that too right now. You know, so it's like, yeah. it's, a, it's a learned habit. So... In terms of writing the letter, let's just say, when I was in school, I couldn't use a calculator. Right. You know? So to write a letter, you have to know this person's address. You have to understand the formalities of this because you're going to need this. Right. With AI, we even have people in your generation that depend on their phone for making a call. Who remembers a number off head anymore? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but honestly, so it's it's the learn habits that we fell into. Um, America pushes comfortability more than anything. So if you don't have to teach this person how to operate it, but somebody else will, we'll take it. So if I don't have to sit here with this baby to make him shut up and go to sleep, I can give him this tablet. And again, the mind is going to develop to understand what it is in front of him. Uh, okay. AI, mm -hmm. you said something about AI. I have a cousin that lives in Chicago. He's a biomedical engineer. Every time I call my cousin or he calls me, I learn something new when it comes to AI. This is turning us into freaking mush right now. Mm -hmm our brains into mush. 
if an AI can actually put together a cover letter for a job, I sat there and I did this myself and it was scary. I couldn't, I didn't have to think. AI does everything for me. We didn't have this luxury growing up. We had to type in our own cover letters. We had to set up our own resumes. We had to do these things ourselves. Now AI is now flipping burgers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've seen videos my cousin sends me and I'm looking at a robot flipping the actual burger, okay? And I'm like, this is our future here, ladies and gentlemen. What, well, what, what, what part do you think AI is going to play in mental health? We don't have to think anymore. We don't so think, we just said, thank like, you. We don't like, have to think anymore. I, 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 think, <laughs> I, I think that he would have to in order for, this is one thing that AI has to get that he doesn't get, right? Mm -hmm. One thing AI can never get, the human emotions and the effect of life. That's next. AI can never get that. Uh, no. We got AI on the job right now, James. We got AI on the job right now where certain reports that I have to develop, I don't have to develop those reports or design those reports anymore. Yeah, or but, but when you talk about mental health, right, as a yeah. human being, um, he, he has to figure out how about caring. Uh, and it has to have some kind of capacity to engage when um, we have a non-response or mm -hmm. when we have something that is pandemic. A computer can't feel pandemic. It doesn't understand pandemic. It can understand that there are people dying and it's not understanding that it's dying. It just knows that a number is changing, right? Mm -hmm. But it never will understand the emotions that God has given us that's built into us to have compassion for someone else to try to save their life, right? It never will have the compassion when you see somebody and you go to St. Jude and you see this, this seven-year-old fighting for her life or his life and they were born that way, right? And it stops them from functioning and cancer is eating up their brain or their body function. Right. And a parent has to sit there and watch that. Right. And, and so AI part plays is like, if I change this gene to do this gene to that gene to this gene, what will it produce? That's what they want AI for. They want mm -hmm. him to answer problems that we were born for. We are the creators of AI. We just causing him to advance on our knowledge. Uh, AI is no more than a computer that has to learn. Correct. He's taking our information and trying to figure out based off of what we have given him. To me, and this is just me, AI can be smart, but he can only be as smart as his creator. Who is his Absolutely. creator? We are. Mm -hmm. If you put the, all the collective 8 billion minds together, AI cannot handle us. But let's say this. We create AI to fix issues. Our issue has become, why are we so depressed? Why do we have so much anxiety? And why do we have so much mental illness? And I think you alluded to something, Brandon. It was more like life was never meant to be as complex as we humans, especially in Western culture has made it, right? Mm -hmm. We have come to a concept now and they're really trying to push this. No longer do we wanna work five days a week. Right. We wanna work four days a week. I'll give you 12 hours, 12, uh, 12 four day hours. I mean, four day, 12 hours, right? Mm -hmm. So I can what? Have more time to to de-escalate and relax and spend with my family. Right. Everybody's for it. Why? I just need to make a living and enjoy my life. I don't need to be like, I don't need to be like Rockefeller 
to be rich. There's nothing wrong with being rich, but that doesn't contend with my happiness. So do you think that's part of the anxiety of trying to achieve something or be something that we're not? Yes. Uh, Oh, go ahead, Brandon. Oh, no, 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 no. Toby. Go ahead, Toby. Go ahead, Toby. (laughs) (laughs) He said a lot, General. He said a lot. He said a lot, and I'm trying to process it in my head. Okay, okay. go ahead, Brandon. Why he processed? Uh, <laughs> no, I want Toby to take this. No, 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 no. Let me let me let me, take, let me take a stab at it. Let me take a stab at it. Like you said, who built AI? We did. Human, the humans did. Now, if we're not careful, AI is going to run us. Okay, that's what if they're afraid careful. of. But my 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 okay. thing is, I I think we have done a lot of. I'm going to tell you something that I, I, I witnessed from everyday people, and that's this, Brandon. Mm-hmm. We major in self-sabotage, right? We major in self-sabotage. We like stuff that is unhealthy for us physically and mentally. We get right. in relationships that are unhealthy just because she looks a certain way or he looks mm-hmm. a certain way or he drives certain things, or he can go certain places, right? Or he has certain resources. Uh, we, we major in self-sabotage, right? Just to prove a point that we can handle it or we can get it. Right. We major in self-sabotage about what we eat. We eat, we allow businesses to be in businesses to create a job, to give us chemicals and processed food that destroys you from the inside out and then have babies and have mental illness, and then make us work so long to bring pressure upon us and anxiety. All for what? Power. I think everybody wants power. Mm -hmm. I think every single human being wants power to have control. Even if they think they're gonna do good with it, I think we all want power to uh, it's like that song back from i think 1985 everybody wants to rule the world right so i can show you that this is the wrong way to go about it right right and and so i say we major in self-sabotage because if we look back at our own lives and some of the the choices we made that are unhealthy they're not mistakes ladies and gentlemen i just want to let you know that Quote, quote, you hear it all the time. <laughs> I just made a mistake. No, they are your choices. Yep. And, and your choices say a lot about you. Mm-hmm. So let no one fool you about, um, oh, I made a mistake. No, no, no. They're your choices. And everybody makes them. You can't get around them. And even if you think you're not going to make a choice, you just did make a choice. Right. Just let him out. Just let him out. I always know you got a choice, but we're talking about mental health. We're talking about mental health because it affects us in every aspect, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to take a look at it one time, uh, Brandon and Toby, is like, prime example, a person says they vaping, but why does it bother you? You shouldn't have to, man, that's, that's, that's not cool. He says, it, it doesn't bother you. Mind your own business. But at the end of the day, when you're sitting in the hospital, guess what you did? You affected yourself. Now somebody got to watch you. Now somebody got to uh, take you to the hospital. Now mm-hmm. somebody has to operate or work on you. The bill goes up. If you can't afford it, guess who? guess what you just did? You just now passed on your bill to the taxpayers, the taxpayers gets increased because there are more people out there like you who may be depressed or whatever, thinking it doesn't bother anybody. But isn't that the agenda? Isn't it always to make myself feel good? Yeah. I mean, because, you know, Toby, we all want to feel good. (laughs) <laughs> whatever it is i want to i want to feel good if i cannot be happy right in my own skin i need to be happy at, uh wherever i can get it so 
if satisfaction, when I went back to talk about self-destruction, mm -hmm. being in a relationship with a young lady who likes to spend all my money, but then I'm singing a Bill Withers song, keep on using me till you use me up <laughs> because I'm getting what I want as long as you keep getting what you need. <laughs> and I'm ending up on self-destruction and depression. And then when she leaves, I'm broke and I'm depressed. So yeah, I'm right. back where I started from. <laughs> it's chaotic. And my family looking at you like, what's going on? Right. I just threw that story out there to really say these things do really happen. And we laugh about it, but it's very true. And we have family members like that. We have uncles like that. I used to have an uncle. I don't even think he ever had a job really too much. Right. Mm. And but he used to take turns going in and out of jail with my other uncle. You know, they was like a tag team. One would go to jail, the other one would be out. The other one would be hanging out at the bottom, the other one would go in. You know, and the sad so, part about it. So yeah. what is this concept? <clears throat> I've heard this concept before. I heard what you said, General, but this just came to me right now. Go ahead. The premise of people saying, man, black people don't get depressed. That's a white man's problem. I don't believe that. I've I've had arguments about that, debates about that with some people. But said black people don't have time to be depressed. Mm -hmm. When you got families to feed, when you got you got a wife at home that's nagging, nagging, you got kids to feed and everything, you don't have time to be depressed. But in actuality, people are depressed. Caucasians are depressed, black people are depressed, brown people are depressed. They go through it. Some people mask it well than others. I went through a battle of depression in my lifetime. I went through it um, years ago where I wanted to just end it all, but I didn't want to have to answer. The, I chose not to answer to God for that. That's one. And two, I have a daughter to live for at the time. I have a daughter to live for. I don't want another man raising my kid. Yeah, did I go through depression? Yeah, I did. I did go through depression. I'm not ashamed of it now. I'm not ashamed at all because my testimony could save someone's life. Absolutely. You know, when you think about the ramifications of what could happen when you do that, you know, so that concept of when people saying, no, nah, that's, that's stuff for all, all other folks. Black people don't get depressed. We ain't got time to be depressed. So no. do you still have the depression, you think? I don't. I don't anymore. You know why I don't? You what? know what, gentlemen, you know why I don't? Because I have too many people that I have to live for right now. It's not about oh. me anymore. So so depression left because you had to work? Depression because I don't want to be selfish and end it all while mm -hmm. people I leave behind, God forbid, are hurting. I don't want did that. It, but end it all, did it drive, like what drove you to that point? What drove me to that point? Mm -hmm. Not being at home because I was on the road a lot. I lived in Detroit, Michigan for about almost two years. Okay. I was flying back and forth between Detroit and Atlanta. I had to learn. I had to watch my daughter on Skype. Skype had just pop, came out at that time. I had to learn. I had to watch my daughter, daughter learn how to read on Skype. I wasn't there with her. My daughter started to read when I was on the road. Certain events of my daughter's life and stuff, I wasn't there. And I was in, I was in a situation or relationship, but I thought it was a relationship. I was in a relationship where <laughs> the other individual didn't really care about what was going on with me mentally, how I'm feeling, how this was killing me. I was flying back and forth to keep the mortgage on my home to provide for the family, which is what my father trained me to do. He trained mm -hmm. me and my brothers to be providers. My father in a minute say, what my friend gets off. What are you doing? You don't have time to be depressed. Yeah, with deep yeah, 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 like a woman, get up and do something. You know, when, you know, it's that enforcing thing that I got from my dad is why I am where I am today and why I actually take pride in taking care of my family. It's not, it's, it's rewarding and fulfilling for me. I don't want anything necessarily in return, but it's rewarding and fulfilling for me because it's something I was trained on. So I had to fight my way out of it. Knock on wood, I never used a pill ever when I was going through that. For almost a year or two, when I was going through that, I never did. Now, depression did stick its rear head out when I was going through the separation and a divorce and everything. I was struggling with that too. But then again, I had to look ahead and say, "Look what's ahead! Look what's ahead of me!" 
Look what I have ahead of me when I get through that that darkness, that traumatic experience. Look what I have. I'm not willing. I want to see it. I want to see it. So just to piggyback on what you said, James, depression doesn't know, doesn't care about your race. We as black people, we just know how to sweep the bug and keep moving. Some of us don't want to accept that we have depression. Okay. Some of us don't want to accept it. No, dude, do that. Yes, you have depression. You need to get yourself checked. There's no shame in it. If you don't want to do it for you, do it for the ones that love you. Because if you take, if you go for the worst and you end up ending your life, or you end up going to the store and start shooting up a bank or shooting up a church or shooting up a gas station or an event, you think you're depressed now? You'd be lucky to survive in jail. You'd be By lucky then, to survive in jail. They, they got the attention that they need. <clears throat> right. Depression, I, and I've said it on the show a couple of times on a couple of topics, a couple of episodes, this is real. This is real. I'm living proof of it. I almost ended up my ended up my life so, in Detroit. So do you think? Do you think Toby, um, knowing what you've gone through, um, the possibility of, let's say, your Lord forbid, your daughter, or she's dating someone to have that. Do you know the different signs that might come about? Mm-hmm. One is isolation. Yeah. Well, I, I I've always looked at isolation as 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 one of the key things with maybe abuse mm-hmm. uh, because the individual wants you separated from your family, no matter how much family is. But then that says something about the individual mm-hmm. uh, because you you attach yourself to an unhealthy individual. And a lot of times I have to believe more times than many, most people know that that relationship is is, is toxic. They but know it's, that but it's, it's unhealthy. But it's giving them something that they're missing. Like what, attention? <clears throat> yeah, you said that earlier and I, I wanted to touch on that. I, I believe it is, like you don't have the compassion, I would say more than attention in that area that that person is able to give to you. So no you know, matter what, what they do, you take it. I, I, I kind of, I can kind of see that. I remember one <laughs> of my, my daughters told me, I said, uh, sweetie, me and mom always told you, we love you, we care about you. And you know what she came back and said to me? She said, dad, I know your mom love me, but I want somebody else to love me. Mm. Mm. And I had to come back with, that may be so, but you have to know how to know when a relationship is unhealthy. Right. right? You got to know how to let go. Uh, and, and dealing with that particular uh, situation allowed her to be in a, in a place that's very dark, right? because you attach yourself and you put down boundaries because you start caring. And once your guard is down, you, um, you're you in there. Yeah. And you are in there in a vulnerable state and someone really manipulate, use you and hurt you. Now, if you don't come out of there and you stay in there thinking that the individual is gonna change, then you become um, someone who allows themselves to be manipulated and lying to yourself, right? Which becomes again, unhealthy, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that are unhealthy um, when we talk about mental health. So uh, we was talking about depression, we were talking about anxiety. I seen anxiety firsthand in in families, you know, they just like, and and they go from zero to 100 real quick, like, what just what what just happened? Why you just blow up? And they they'll start cursing, and you try to look at them and say, "It's okay, just relax. You don't have to do that. That person didn't mean what you think they mean." Mm-hmm. And then when you get them calmed down from going to zero to one hundred, 
you wonder where did this come from? The past. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of times I would, but this is the question. thing. I've been, I've been a man that went to combat, and I'm, I've seen men, they come back, and they're not the same. Mm -hmm. They're not even the same with their family. They don't even sleep, right? These men and these women operate under stress 24 hours a day. Yep. And when you see that, you're like, who is my uncle? Who's my husband? That's not the same person that I met. That's not the same person I fell in love with. There's something going on there. And a lot of these men, believe it or not, they need a lot of help, a lot of mm. help. Uh, they think the police officers need help. You ain't seen nothing until you deal with military. You got to keep going over there, keep going over there, keep going over there, and keep operating in stress. And you have to ratchet it up and keep going up. That kind of stress leaves men into the depression, and they're not the same. And people don't relate to them. Their children don't relate to them. That's why they had some years ago about um, how many people, how many military people die per day, commit suicide because they were depressed. Because that wasn't the same loving person they were. But one thing I will say, the government never takes responsibility. They'll so, never take responsibility quick. for what they do. So, hey, James. Hey. <laughs> so, um, we we know the military aspect where, you know, when war breaks out and, you know, when the dominant effect of uh, military soldiers gets affected mental illness. But now that there's a new war, the war now is like society had changed so much <clears throat> where, um, Everybody had to work twice as hard now from 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 a young, you know, pe people like Brandon, you know, younger, you know, between schools, um, you know, we have kids and they have more, di they have different challenges now. So it's like, how how would you how do we handle that? You know, you know, we we already at our certain age right now. Um, up, um, you know, we're not saying we old old men, but we getting up there. You know, Brandon's gonna be around longer than us. So they will be your daughter, other folks, and that's the that's a big war right there. So you know, you have kids now committing suicide at a young age. You have kids now like you know, under a lot of pressure. You know, um, I, I know, I, I know not not even directly on directed to, on directed to me, but I know I know a few young folks that's going to school right now, and the pressure's on where they have to go to school, work, maybe don't get no support from their family. And they have to kind of try, try to figure this out. So that's that's like a lot of toll on the mind, and that pushed them into those things you guys are talking about. And you know, so then, so how, what we can, how can we set up a like? And that's the I don't want to say we, but it would be something that we how we can communicate it, and it'd be nice to and 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 and, and, and plus kind of leverage what you're doing at right now at the church, with the youths, and if that's something you guys talk about, how we can set up something to talk about to leverage that, you know, how we, you know, and if I'm saying that right to man, you know, how, what's the, 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 the conversation we can teach them and say, you know, how we can manage that. Like, you know, if I'm saying that right, you know, so I don't know if anybody want to jump in, if I uh, forget what I'm saying, because that's, that's a big thing that's, you see it, you see on TV, like I, I know one incident, you know, um, a young kid, seven year old was going to come to school and stab a uh, teacher. You know, mm -hmm. just because she took the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, that was wow. recently. That was recently. <laughs> you know, I, I saw, I saw a, a young girl. I saw a teacher manhandle a young young girl because she took the phone, and then she slammed the girl to the floor, and that went viral all over the place. And that was a substitute teacher. Where have I been? <laughs> <laughs> so there's things like that occurring where you know how we you know. You know, we are this generation here, but that generation is dealing with so much. And then we, you know, we, we, you know, the mental illness is growing so fast that it's touching homes. And like I said, like, like I said, they are like that time. Our time is different from their time. <clears throat> the digital world is taking over too at the same time. 
Yeah. But we, you know, it's like, you know, how can we set something to our communicate I, I, something? That, I, I oh. think one of the things uh, that we do is mm -hmm. um, always teach somebody's always watching. Mm -hmm. Somebody's always watching. Right. And if you are a a leader, a person that cares, uh, people never know how much you care till they actually see you're caring, right? Um, that we have to be a, almost like a standard bearer, right? Uh, and take our time with one, because you can't just um, go and think that individuals can um, start with a person and then leave them, right? Uh, I think it's a process. Relationship, I, I, I always teach this, uh, and, I, and I'm a starch proponent of this. There are two things that you really do not get taught in life. And especially in Western culture, or pretty much in all cultures, I would say. That's this, how to handle money. Mm -hmm and how to deal with relationships. Mm -hmm. Now we all have relationships and most people, when I say relationships, they think about the opposite sex. No, relationships mm -hmm. are all, that means from the school teacher, that means from the pastor, that means from the mom and dad, your mind should be in a concept of understanding what type of relationship am I having with someone, right? Because Toby has a fiance, he's going to get married. But he also has, he's dealing with three young ladies, right? Now, how he interacts with them will determine that relationship and how they reciprocate. If you don't get taught relationships, you will always continue to make poor choices in relationships, right? Uh, and you're playing a guessing game. Like, you you know that, that uh, when you go to the carnival, they have that game where, okay, you pay $5 and you get like three darts or five darts and you got to throw them at the balloon. Right. That's how people yeah. are experimenting mm -hmm. with their life. They want to throw darts at right. it to see if they're going get, right. to get a prize, right? right. And that's right. never what God has intended for us, right? Our relationships should be important. Those who are close enough to you, uh, they're there for a reason. Those who we have an assignment with, I like to say, to help them in some aspect of life, uh, especially with young folks, they are examining what you're doing. So Brandon, they are looking at you in an entertainment field they're in, and they wanna know, is Brandon gonna sell his values out? Right. And what I mean by that, is Brandon gonna hook up for that girl, right? So she will give up her body to get something from you with the experience, right? Mm -hmm. Or, um, certain things like having people have these type of relationships with you and don't appreciate them, right? Mm -hmm. So Courtney, for me, I do what young children do is they wanna know how to navigate life because they don't know. I have, I have children right now at my church who's gonna graduate high school. They don't know how to navigate the college thing, you know, like, how do you fill out, you know, I, I told one young lady, I was like, hey, you're going into your senior year. What colleges are you looking at? Two, if you haven't taken your SAT or ACT yet, you need to take that now, the summer one. And if you don't do well, you come back for that October one so you can get your scores back by December so you can send away and get the, 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 the grant money that's on the top end, because that's what happens, right? It's just little things like that, Courtney, that mm -hmm. these children don't know how to navigate. Yeah, um, you know, just speaking off of that alone, that process of going to college and everything of that, um, I played football, blew out my knee senior year, tore my patella tendon. Um, wow. I, I had workouts with major schools, D1, and if I did not play football, I wouldn't have known. <clears throat> so my coaches were the one, hey, you have to do this. Hey, you have to take that class. My counselor, hey, 
Um, you know, we need this just to make the paperwork look good, you know, and, and push you through the system. So certain pipelines are not as see-through to the black exactly. man um, and to younger generations because like, at the end of the day, it's about numbers. So right. they really don't care about a, a large group of us. Uh, exactly. And there are shy mm-hmm. people. There are right. children out there who are in the middle row, who are in the bottom of the class. Right. And they and they say to themselves in their mind, and Courtney's right, they say in their mind, I'm not smart enough. I don't mm-hmm. deserve to go to that college. Uh, my mom is not going to fill out the paperwork. My dad, I, I don't even know where he's at. Don't nobody mm-hmm. care about me. Those are the people that are very vulnerable that will get out there and be on the news because the world is going to show them some attention and they really, because whatever attention they get, they're going to be like, oh, that's love. And then they go do something real wild. But you, you and mentioned then all of a sudden everybody's like, How come you social media is doing a lot of that navigation, which you just mentioned. Yeah. And it's causing like nobody likes my posts. Nobody shared my posts. Nobody <laughs> because they're not because they're not getting it from somewhere else. So you mentioned mom and dad, right? That's the first example of people that you have on this planet. <clears throat> so if mom and dad are this way, this is how my world is shaped at this point. Right. So if my dad never held my mom's hand, I don't know to hold my girlfriend's hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, right. so in terms of just passing down the information, if mom and dad does a poor job in, in, in loose words, I would say, then it's kind of hard for that person to navigate life because the navigators didn't guide them in the right direction. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough because I can see some of that because I, I know my parents was uh, totally was like wasn't focused and I had to figure that out pretty fast. But it wasn't, you know, it's not like it was 100%. Um, but then, you know, it's almost like, do you want to continue? You know about the history of your parents already. Mm-hmm. Then it's up to that person, woman or man, you know, to say, I want to stop. And it's always that when you hear it in church or you hear it from somebody, you got to break the curse. I want to break it. Right yeah, here. but but you know yeah. what, Courtney? I, I noticed something. Um and I guess to- uh, Toby can attest to this from from his um, from his side. Um, there's a part of us, even as we grow up, that we know right from wrong. There, there's a part of us, you know. Mm-hmm. We know uh, if you do this, there's a possibility that you're going to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if, even right. if you're trying to sleep with somebody that, and you're young and you're a teenager, there's a possibility you can get in trouble or even yep. worse, she can get pregnant. Okay. Right. And so that's a possibility. And that's where we have to take ownership at. Uh, I think a generation now has watched us and said uh, to themselves, <laughs> I'm not buying into everything that you're telling me because your life is not reflecting what you're talking about. Correct. And that's what they're doing to us. They, they're saying, okay. I hear what you're saying, right? But there's only very few of you who are doing what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm finding the rest of y'all are liars. And because I know y'all have gotten caught doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing, I ain't trying to hear nothing you're trying to say. So then the real ones say something and they're like, "Uh, well, I might listen to you, but I enjoy my friends now. We lost them. Why did we lose them? Because nobody had went back when they were younger to train them, right? And this is the whole thing. I hear Toby, and Toby said this very important thing. My worldview has been shaped by my father, who is dead and gone. And I will tell you this, Brandon, and I had to learn this. Mm -hmm. This world are ran by dead people. For sure. Mm -hmm. And someone says, what are you talking about? This whole world philosophy is ran by dead people. This country is ran by dead people. They wrote that over 200 some odd years ago, but we're still following it, right? Our ideas and shapes and our thoughts are ran by dead people. Now, what we must do is take that information, translate it to another generation, 
so they can understand how to navigate that. Mm -hmm. And we all can't do everything, but we can do our part. And that's what matters. Because the very one that you might get a hold of to change lives will be the one that can change a multitude of lives, right? Right. Because they might Mm -hmm. have the passion and the drive for it. They want someone to care about them, right? So when I'm talking and I have passion and and I'm talking to young folks, I'm talking to older folks, or I'm talking to uh, people my age, uh, they know when they're being hustled and they know when someone genuinely cares. They know when someone's intelligent and have information to share, right? I found that people like me, or I should just talk about myself, when I'm talking to someone who is highly educated, but lack that part of, of, of navigation of life mm-hmm. with choices, they're like, wow, but these people got a master's and a PhD. But they're looking mm-hmm. at you because you just took valuable parts of life and translated it to them for their understanding. They're like, uh, I got it now. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. To them, you are smart as all get out. Right. Because they're intelligent on one level, but your intelligence are somewhere else of how to navigate life and how to understand their children because a lot of them don't even understand their own children, mm-hmm. right? And they wonder why they're giving them everything, but there's no real, no real relationship. They just understand that's mom and dad, dad is this way, mom is that way, but they're not understanding their poor choices and their relationships to the people they're dealing with who they're never gonna even marry. But they're just doing it for a hookup because they want some attention and they think this is it. It feels good. It feels it good. You know, because I, I, I'm bad. depressed. It's bad when you have when you have um people right now. I am so sorry. That is that dog. Oh my lord. <laughs> it's all good, man. We want to the conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's bad when you have people right now these days fighting for likes on social media, mm-hmm. especially the youth. Especially the youth today. If they don't get a certain level of likes or views, they take it personal. Oh, the world doesn't love me. Oh, the people don't care about me. People don't think about me. People don't care for what I do, how I do, or whatever. And then mm-hmm. if if oh, right now it's about we're in the world of likes. And then they take it personal if people don't like it and people put their opinions out there. Do you know that sometimes on social media today? That if people say something negative or they can't take constructive criticism, people go and end it, end it all because of what somebody said. Because of what somebody said, which they don't, somebody said something, they made a comment and this person ended their life. This is someone that they don't even know. We live in a world right now, gentlemen, where we, we have to get likes. Oh, they like my picture. They like my this. They like my that. And I'm like. Okay, so if they don't like it, you still who you are anyway. Correct. But Toby, they're showing you and telling you what they value. Yeah, validation. Right. So I value what you're saying about what I'm doing, right? To them, that's value, right? And once again, if you don't tell them or show them uh, what's really valuable, then they get to choose at the end of the day with their life to determine what is value. I teach adults this all the time. It's like, in your life, you get to choose uh, who gets in your inner circle and who doesn't. You get to determine that. You get to determine who's a friend and who's not. Right. Even, even your own family that, members, who can come close and who can't, right? Mm-hmm. You get to determine that. But at the end of the day, Right. Since it's your choice. Right. You're held responsible. Right. And with that responsibility comes something with that. Right. When that person has done wrong or the boundaries go down Mm -hmm. and they they do something that is unhealthy to you, that means that you never had a discussion about boundaries to that individual. So now Mm -hmm. you've been violated and you're upset. 
So that's another thing. People don't have boundaries. They don't know what their boundaries are. And then you hear stuff like, they disrespected me or, you mm-hmm. know, I don't play that and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. But first of all, you never set the I boundaries. Remember. So don't get upset about something that you exactly. never took care of in the first place. Right. But check this out. I remember back in the days, there, there was there was things out there where, you know, shows and communication that would take place. You know, gowns counselors would exist where they can actually catch some of these these things that, you know, these incidents, you want to call them. Social media is a whole different beast now, like you said, lives and breathe by itself. So once school is over, kids on their own. Um, could, you know, some of them might be under the right guidance. Like, you know, kids, you know, they have a timeout where they don't see anything digital until after dinner or something like that. But, you know, everybody got their own device and all that. So, so it's almost like now, they like this. There's communication. Like you, you have these little commercial pop up. Like you know, text and text and drive and drink and don't drink and drive and all that. It's almost you got to create these mental illness um, commercials and promos. And there's a few of them out there, but there's not a lot of them out there. So we need to kind of if not not we, but it would be nice that society takes it seriously, where they can push out things like that. And then they, you know, we had to talk about the likes and the views and have a promo on that. So it's almost like if we in this digital world, we need. There need to be enough communication that's going out. Well, and just I mean, like how you made a topic and across the board, maybe that can help <laughs> slow down some of the madness of it. Well, I mean, that kind of goes back to the conversation of AR. I mean, they we're mm-hmm. we're programmed at this point <clears throat> because of the algorithm to feel that the likes validate you as a person, your business, or your content, whatever you have, that like. Uh, falls into your analytics. Your analytics is what you can take to the bank, right? So mm-hmm. when you tie all of that together, that's why people feel the way that they do. Because if I don't have this number, then technically I'm not valuable yeah. to anybody else. Yeah. Because they, 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 they measure themselves. And it makes it worse. Right. It makes it worse that YouTube and these other TikToks, they, <laughs> they're making a killing off our you know, of the, the youths and they making them thinking like they, they, you know, they're the next TikToker or whatever you want to call it, the next YouTube, you, you know, and then they get in <laughs> some type of, you know, funding behind it. <laughs> so they're, not, so right. they're promoting the madness on top of it. So, you know, they're not helping society, you know what I mean? So it's like almost like you got to figure out how to like, you know, I don't know if parents wrote and, and petitioned that they got to stop all of this stuff because... You know, YouTube to me is like a big pot of everything. You know, they have no control over that. You know, TikTok, same thing. They have no control over that. Facebook, no control over that. And there got to be some, you know, way to, like I said, they're going to promote. But, you know, there's there's the always something. Regulate, regulate Facebook. Other countries well, regulate Facebook but, and right. TikTok. But, we okay. don't. We Even don't. if you did right. that, I, I think like anything else, um, time transitions things right and i remember what was that 20 some odd years ago when uh black planet was hot right (laughs) all of a sudden it it came in like a storm (laughs) all black people was on it right next thing you know it got sold and you ain't no more right i i think different things are 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 it's like a fad. It's almost like fashion. It comes in and then it leaves, right? Uh, so when, before we, we got to this right here, uh, like you were talking about Skype, and I remember everybody's like, okay, we got to get on Skype. And then I know schools, they were talking about all of a sudden schools, you got to get on Blackboard. There's always something that is new and approved, right? And I, I think it's it's a learning curve for that generation. Right. Uh, I can remember when when kids had cell phones and my my, my, my children asked for a cell phone. Uh, just think about what cell phones was looking like 23 years ago. You know, totally different. Big yeah, brick. They, they were bigger. <laughs> right. And, and, and so it was like, is it going to get any smaller? Now, you, now you got I-14 and you can do a movie on a phone now. Right. Uh, I remember back in the day when VCRs was about this big, you know, 
and it looked like a microwave. And as fast as it can came in, as fast as it leaves out, just like CDs. The question is not about so much as those apps. It's about what can we do relational wise to do better and prepare the next generation, right? And that part of is knowing how to navigate life. Uh, Cause at the end of the day, as they get older and they become uh, the next Brandon and Brandon and moved up and he's like, well, I navigated that particular situation like this, you know, cause they're going to be looking at your life. They're going to be your, your, your nieces, your nephews, your cousins, your, your aunties and uncles. They're going to look at what you did. They're going to look at how you talk. They're like, mm-hmm. yeah, he got tax, but you know, he talks so eloquently. You know, he can articulate very correctly. You know, I, I, I like that young man. But if I didn't know you and I seen Taz, what's my natural? You're black. Maybe he a thug. Right. right? Mm-hmm. True. Naturally, until I hear how you talk. And then when I hear right. how you talk, it's like, oh, okay. So he's educated. He's wise. He's smart. And they're like, oh, okay. I can relate to him. Why? Mm-hmm. Because now he's no longer a threat to me because I've just programmed my mind. Right. Because I've seen the tax, because of his skin color, because of the way he dressed. But then I heard how he talked and I reassessed. Mm-hmm. This every is day. what we always do. They yeah, call it judging. I call mm-hmm. it inspecting. For sure. You know, that, that, that that's the difference. Judging means I'm giving a verdict. I'm not giving a mm-hmm. verdict. I'm inspecting. So right. I'm looking at it one way until I get more information. I got more information when I heard Brandon talk. Got it. That's what life is. And that's how we have to approach the next generation it says, let me help you navigate that. Right. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants the big job, but everybody doesn't know how to go about getting it. Right. Or don't want to put the, or don't want to put the work in to get it. Right. The work and there are people get it. who want to right. put the work in, but don't know how to do it. So on Courtney's right. end, Courtney's like, okay, I'm a, I'm, I'm a tech person, right? So is Toby. Brandon, so are you. I yeah. used to be in that, but I'm, I'm out of that. There's a way that younger people in that field, especially people of color, that they see in that field, and they're like, how can I get in that field? You know, everybody's not going to get a PhD. Everybody's not going to get a master's. You know, mm-hmm. everybody's not going to write a book, you know? Uh, But the objectivity is to be the best you. And they Mm -hmm. need people who are going to help them be the best them. And I always tell children, I said, when you're a teenager, my objectivity for you is God wants to introduce you to the real you. Mm -hmm. Because you have never gotten introduced to the real person yet, to the real Toby, to the real Courtney. Most people don't get introduced to the real person until almost the end and they're ready to die. And they be like... I got it, man. Until right. somebody comes along and helps them navigate mm-hmm. life in such a way, and they're like, oh, I can get to my destination quicker now. Because why? Mm-hmm. I know who I am, right? So now I don't have to pretend or get involved in stuff that's not me, right? I don't have to be around certain people to get access. Now I know how to navigate that situation. You know, oh, I, have so- a, I have a question. Go ahead. Not to cut you off. I'm sorry about that. No, but you're fine. How, how do we go about it if I want it more than you do for your well being? Like, very then, how, then that conversation. It's very easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's taking confidence in that. If, if you can always tell when someone's hungry, right? Mm-hmm. And they're always going to take the instructions of the wise individual and do them. Mm-hmm. And they're going to do them quicker. And then they're going to come back and tell you that they did them and tell you the result of what they did, right? Mm-hmm. Even if it takes some time. You know, let's say uh, Courtney says, hey, this is what I want you to do. Um, go to Georgia Film School, sign up there. It's a, lot, it's a lot less people, but the drive is a lot further, right? But you're going to get better information, right? So you got to be willing to put the effort in, even though it's in another county. Mm-hmm. If the person goes, d- does it and do it and get involved in, they're like, 
he was right. All right. And then started getting access and meeting different people. Guess what? That person was hungry and they did what the individual who navigated that system mm. correctly. So gotcha. if I wanted and me and you were competing, the only thing that would show to the individual is how hungry are you? Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. just like it's just like uh, we, when we watch sports. You know, when we watch sports, we're like, them, them two good teams. Yeah, they won't whoever, whoever's going to be the hungriest, they're going to come out. It's going to be a battle, yeah. but they're going to come yeah. out. Because why? Yeah. They're hungry. Yep. And when yep. you're hungry, you 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 come. You come yep. with everything you got. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. when you're wanting something like that, then I would say, hey, listen to the individual, navigate that, and, and constantly check back and reassess where are you currently at? Mm -hmm. Where am I currently at now that I took this information and did this with it? Where am I at? Because once it's sort of like the military, we go so far at night traveling and then we stop and reevaluate. Where am I at? Where am I at? Because I'm trying to get somewhere, but I need to reevaluate where am I at? Because if I never go back and, and reevaluate where I'm at, I can be somewhere where I'm not supposed to be thinking right. where I'm at is the right place. And it's not. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, Brandon, one final yes, question sir. as uh, we're getting signals here to wrap up. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would like to leave with the youth to do better? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for me, my my point is God. Uh, that's my that's my power source. That's where I go every day, every morning, every night um, in order to keep me grounded and for discernment, uh, I would say to my generation, let's have fun while we do it, right? But <laughs> Turn it account up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Accountability, accountability mm -hmm. is everything. Every decision you make, it's going to be a consequence attached to it. Mm -hmm. With with every relationship that you have, understand that every person just wants to be loved and accepted for who they are. Um, right. Fighting in a career, it's going to get hard, right? So I didn't really dive into my background in the beginning, but because it's not really about me, it's about everybody else. But uh, I've submitted music and had music submitted to major record labels when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. It, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. No. Right? Um, it's a long fight. It's a battle. Right. If you want to get to the top of that hill, we can get there. We might mm -hmm. be tired, feet gonna hurt, and I and I'm running out of water. But if you want to get there, you will get there. So I would just say stay dedicated and true to yourself and anything is possible. Okay. Okay. Um, Brandon, thank you so much for you know your your what you brought to the show today. Thank you for the words of wisdom. Hopefully the youths can watch this and learn a thing or two from it. Um, the general, thank you. You gave me, there's never a day I do this show that I don't learn nothing from you, that I don't take away a, a thing or two. It's either I take away a thing or two or you put me on the spot to respond to something. So <laughs> I love it. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Um, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. Um, thank I don't you. have much to say today. Um, at some point down the line, Brandon, will probably bring you back at some yes, point um, I'll, be, I'll be honored to um let's continue this conversation uh, as you can see we loot very loose on our on our team here very loose and relaxed um you know because the information that we give out here we do believe is helping people is it's helping a lot of people people that we know and people that we don't know um mm -hmm. so um general um if you my last thing i'm going to say before i hand off to general to close um at the end of the day we always say off the show, hug someone, check in on someone, tell them you love them. Just check on them and see how you do, how they're doing. Because you never know what they're going through. Just because they're smiling doesn't mean it's all right. They're smiling to, just to cover up what they're going through. So my, I always try to say this on every, every show. Call someone you haven't spoken to in a while. Hug on someone you haven't seen in a while. Because you just never know. That hug or that call can have a split second turnaround of whatever they were planning to do that was negative. Yep. So let's keep that in mind. And General, I hand off to you to close us out. 
Okay. Well, <laughs> once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you. We thank you for your time. Blessings to you. Uh, thank you, Toby, um, um, for for joining in on us. Brandon, man, you have a you 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 have a great future ahead of you. Uh, yes, you do. No one told you. We're proud of you. Keep up the yep. great work. And always remember, you never know who's watching you. So you got to stay true to yourself. Uh, as you said, you spend the time with the Lord, filter everything through him and use your discernment. And you're going to get to where he has you to be. Uh, you're young. There are a lot of people who are young. Um, I always say with the blessings also comes an enemy just as equal. So as you climb, mm -hmm. just be prepared for that warfare. Uh, yes, and you're never in it. Never believe that you're in any fight by yourself. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, because there's someone with you and someone should always be walking with you spiritually as well as mentally. So without further ado, we appreciate you. Hopefully I see you soon, Brandon. Love yes, you, sir. brothers. Uh, take care. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank sir. you, Courtney, to C3. Thank you, Courtney. We appreciate you. Uh, I'll see you next week in the studio, my friend. Uh, blessings to you. Enjoy the summer. Yeah. And get you yeah. some vacation time in. Rest your thoughts. Rest your body. Enjoy your families. And love and hug someone. God bless all of you. Thank Rest. you. Love. All right. Bye, Thank gentlemen. You. Night. Good night. Good night.